Welcome to the Nation's Papers. Today we're going to talk about the Nova Open 2019. The Nova Open 2019 was absolutely massive, as it is every single year. I mean, absolutely unreal. I felt like I was a smaller part of. Hi there, uh, so yeah, caught me coming back from work and just about unwinding here. Uh, I'm gonna change off, but I'm gonna talk about the Nova Open 2019. Segue into some of the incredible models we saw there.
Among all the classes I took at the Nova Open, there was one professor that I hold near and dear to my heart. Honestly, because he was the first one that really inspired me to look at miniature art as more of art than just for playing games. And that is Mr. Matt Pietro. Matt DiPietro is an amazing person. If you've ever looked at any of the Warma Hordes box sets, he's the one that actually painted all those. Uh, he is an amazing artist. He is an amazing person. And I had this opportunity to actually interview him. Check this out. Okay, so I'm here with Matt DiPietro, master painter here at the Nova Open. Uh, one of my first senseis when it comes to actually teaching, um, learning how to paint uh, miniatures and really trying to inspire me to uh, paint miniatures and really push myself as an artist because I never knew that miniature painting was an art form until I saw your painting. Um, let me tell, I want you to be able to tell everybody about contrast miniatures, about your painting style. Like, what is contrast miniatures? Let's start. Well, yeah, thank you, Robert, for inviting me to do this interview. I really uh, enjoy sh being able to share my art form and uh, my take on miniatures and art with uh, everybody on your channel and the world. Um, contrast miniatures is the name of my uh, studio um, where I do all my work for private collectors and also um, I'm based in a really beautiful part of Washington State next to the um, Puget Sound so clients will come and visit me in my studio and take private coaching and I can uh, you know really focus in on these like intense two-day workshops in my studio and it's a great like kind of uh, vacation that people can go on and uh, learn about the art of miniatures and um, I customize each class for wherever that person is in their personal journey. Um, it's not just about how I paint, it's about how you paint and showing you um, what the next step is on your own personal journey and, and um, it's just been really a positive experience um, and I like to, I mean, I named myself Contrast Miniatures because I wanted to create kind of not only, you know, focusing in on contrast being the most important thing on uh, your figure, all different types of contrast, but also like kind of create a contrast from, you know, in between, you know, like hobbying and, and gaming and, uh, and art, like fine art. For me, um, when I'm painting uh, at my highest level, I'm trying to express myself and uh, create a, express my emotions, express my ideas in, in the art, and um, and have my the viewers of my art kind of be able to feel something from that, and that, that emotion that they feel or that concept that they're feeling can be personal to them as well. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of um, why I named myself Contrast Miniatures, and um, what I'm all about with, uh, with my personal studio and my personal work. That's awesome. And I noticed that when you put your passion into your work, it really translates. And if you put that emotion, it'll come out into your finished piece. Um, any advice on uh, future miniature painters coming up there? And what started you uh, into getting that passion for the hobby? Yeah, well, I started like uh, just everybody else with miniatures uh, when I was in my teenage years. Uh, I was really into, I got into gaming and uh, and everything. Uh, I got into building models and things because my dad built scale models like uh, airplanes and tanks and that sort of thing. And then I had a mom, my mom uh, was an artist that made artistic quilts and like drawing and painting and stuff like that. Um, so it kind of combined those two things uh, that I'd already been familiar with. Uh, and um, But the thing that really like cemented it for me and turned it into an art for me like mo like I'll, when I was younger, kind of in my teenage years, I was going through like a lot of rough times at school and like, you know, bullying and that sort of stuff. Um, and like painting and art was a way, like an escape for me, a way to be like by myself and, uh, and kind of work through my emotions and that sort of thing. Um, so I think that it, it kind of like, at that time, like miniature painting kind of saved my life, you know? So, um, 
like that's kind of how I got really into uh, miniatures and it became an expression for me. And at the time I was like, you know, always, I always thought, you know, somebody's got to paint those models that go on the box sets and the books and stuff like that. But it was kind of like an impossible dream is like in the middle, mid 90s or whatever. And, uh, you know, the only studio was like Games Workshop Studio, which is like on the other side of the world. But I was really lucky to have uh, Privateer Press opened up kind of like in my backyard. Um, so I got my foot in the door there at Privateer, uh, packing models in their warehouse. Uh, <laughs> wow. And, uh, and started talking to the studio, let them know, like, this is my dream, and, and uh, you know, I'm here, and um, I'm just going to do whatever it takes to uh, make this dream possible. These days, like, the dream is possible for anybody, you know, uh, to, if you work hard enough and you're passionate about it and you put yourself out there and share yourself with the world, uh, you know, they could, they can come back and, and, um, and uh, yeah, like uh, I think that there's just a lot more possibilities with miniatures these days and the, that's just like the miniature um, community is huge and uh, with the internet, you know, you can kind of make a living anywhere. So, uh, but that's kind of how I got started uh, there. And, yeah. It's really interesting that you say you started off with scale models. I mean, that's how I started off with my brother as well. And I've had that transition as well where I was going through a depression. In fact, I'm doing a series uh, about depression and how a hobby is saving a lot of people's life. So maybe I, if you want to talk about more about that uh, in a later episode, uh, you can come back and I can contact you. But sure, I'd know. love to do that. Oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, that, yeah. that's send awesome. Me a, send me a contact. I can kind of go into a bit more, you know, because yeah. I think that it's, you know, Sometimes as an artist, you you wonder, it's like, oh, what am I do? What am I doing with my life? Like, how am I? How is this? Uh, you know, I'm not out there like um, you know, curing cancer, or, like doing scientific research or something like that. But it's like uh, I realize that um, that teaching and that uh, passing on that art to other people, like it does, it is beneficial. You know, it is. Uh, I am making a difference with my art. You know. Well, absolutely. You. You're teaching inspiration. You are inspiration. Uh, you're teaching hope for others. You're teaching that it's balanced and the importance of art in our community. I've seen a lot of people, especially working in um, as a teacher, that the art programs are diminishing and it's really hurting our community. It's really hurting. I mean, without art, without expression, where would we be? A solid black and white color uh, landscape where buildings are just one form. We need art in our society, and it's also an outlet for depression and for just lifting up spirits in general. Um, why are flags colorful? You know, it inspires yeah. a nation. I mean, you, it just goes deeper. So, yeah, absolutely. You are a pillar of this community. You are an amazing artist and an inspiration to all. Uh, he also has a Patreon page, don't forget to do that, where he actually shares uh, lessons on how to do everything as well. Yeah, if you uh, want to check out the Patreon, it's uh, Miniature Monthly is a Patreon and you not only get uh, my, I, I've created videos at the $10 level for Manager Monthly. You, there's two other artists, Aaron Lovejoy and Elizabeth Beckley. So you're getting the, the different perspectives from different artists and we create three videos a month for that. Uh, and um, so it's a really great investment. This, we got tons of videos. I think we might have over a hundred videos now. Uh, and when you uh, subscribe at that ten dollar level, you get all of the all, access to all of the videos, and you can just see whatever's going on. Right now, I'm uh, creating uh, video tutorials on the uh, di the diorama with Sanguinius from 30K, um, and I'm doing an NMM non-metallic metal armor for all of that uh, armor on Sanguinius. Uh, so that's the, my current uh, like video series that I'm doing. Uh, so if you want to know how to, my take on painting non-metallic metals, and uh, so check that one out. And I have, just have tons of videos on all different types of subjects. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, joining me today and having the time to, uh, to have this interview. It's really awesome to get to meet you again. Uh, I've met you before uh, in the last pre previous Nova Opens, and always an honor to come and meet you, sir, and uh, take class with you. Yeah, thank you, Robert. I really enjoyed the opportunity, and uh, hopefully, I get to join you again on your uh, on your channel and talk a bit about a bit more about uh, art and uh, how it can help help people in their own lives. Excellent. Well, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. 
So I finally did it. I actually entered a piece at the Capitol Palette in Nova Open 2019. And I'll tell you, it was an unforgettable experience. It was to the point where even my wife came down to surprise me with my in-laws. My wife is absolutely incredible. So, you might be wondering, how did I do with the Capital Palette? So, I got myself this little pin. See that? And that's a finalist. Now, at first, I was like, not a medal, why? But honestly, uh, Vince Venturola told me that there's no overlapping. So, this isn't a pin at the amateur class. It's not a pin at the journeyman class, which I was told that if I entered, I would have got straight gold and possibly best in show. But it's a pin in the master class. That's the big dogs. So, I'm really proud of this sucker right here. This little pin, I'll tell you. Whoa! That's right. So, um, I'm honored to be considered among the big dogs. Let's not forget about the swag. Oh yeah. All right, I stopped by GW and I picked this up from brother James Meeks who asked me to get this. It's not my swag, but it's definitely swag that I picked up. I also picked up a set of metal gaming dice for my buddy James Meeks as well that he had asked me to get. Something for the channel that I picked up is the dice tray. That's right, that's for battle reports that we're gonna do. So GW, you hooked me up. At Dad's Army's LLC, I picked up these great Green Stuff World uh, leaf cutters, which is really good for my terrain. They also had a variety of rolling pins, although they sold out the ones that I wanted by the time I got there. Now, they did tell me that they packed up twice as much as they did last year, but they still sold out. Well, I'm saying that's good for business, although I'm left without rolling pins. Maybe next year. For the Nova Open itself, of course, they had the limited edition jersey, and of course, I had to pick up Roar. Emily, you say so, you say so, uh, is actually inspired me to pick this one up. Roar, because you have a T-Rex with lasers. <laughs> At Table War, not only did I pick up, I usually pick up a mat, but I didn't pick up a mat this year. I usually pick up one, but I did pick up this micro mat, so this way it enhanced my picture quality better. So I did pick this up over there, and they gave me a free dice bag. Check out this big thing. Table War! Next up, I went to Epic Quest Master. Check them out online. I'm gonna have links in the description. And I picked up some terrain, but this is not just regular terrain. Terrain, this is terrain 3D printed, truly high quality. Take a look at that. So it's a ruined building, great for AOS, the right scale in my opinion. Um, all epic, epic stuff. And not only is it a complete building, it's not just one piece though. See, if you lift this up, you actually get the detail on the inside as well. And if you lift that up, you get more detail on the end. But that's not where it ends. And these fit directly right into place very easily. And I'm excited to paint these for tutorials on the channel, or possibly just for terrain on our battle reports. But not only this, I also picked up another piece here, this cottage, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I think I'm gonna pick up two pieces a year. They're really great value for what you get. Ultra high detail. Uh, and you got that blown out over here. I like the blown out kind of uh, staggering stuff. But I like their complete stuff too. They have complete versions of these buildings. But again, just like the other one, incredible detail right here. And we see the stairs going downstairs yes there is a downstairs you open that up and you get the basement as well it's just all legitimately 3d highly highly quality uh sculpted um there was an artist they contracted it and their work was just so phenomenal i don't know the name of the artist i've asked them several times what the name of the artist is and uh i don't know uh i, I don't remember the name of the artist so that was my bad but 
I mean epic stuff at Epic Quest uh, Master. And a huge shout out to White Metal Games, who has excellent deals. If you ever go to the Nova Open, check out uh, White Metal Games because you can haggle their prices and you get the best deal. So what I picked up here was a uh, Time Worn Ruins and really epic deals. And then I got the Desolated Township. So I have more AOS terrain. Look how thick this is. This thing is heavy. This thing is like really heavy. In conjunction with the Azerite townscape over here uh, and the enduring storm vault over here. Ugh. I mean, I think I got myself some AOS terrain for some AOS battle reports coming up soon. Shout out again, White Metal Games, link in the description. Well, that's it for the swag announcement. Catch you next Nova Open, September 2nd through the 6th, 2020. Well, there you have it. The Nova Open 2019, what an unforgettable experience. What an amazing time with friends. And wow, just had a blast. And I can't wait to start working on the next piece for next year. Who knows, maybe next year I'll come away with a bronze. Well, if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Oh, the miniatures, baby.